right? There are various opinions on whether or not becoming a vegetarian can lead to health benefits. With so much to consider, it's no wonder the choice to become vegetarian, it, you know, it could be a little tough. So here now to explain all the benefits of becoming a veg vegetarian and what it all means, we welcome back nutrition and health expert, Nancy Addison. Hello, Nancy, and Hello. welcome again. Yes. And thank you for always stopping by open when you're here in New York. I see you're rocking your Texas flavor today. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for bringing a little bit of Texan energy here to the Bronx this morning. Thank you for having me. I love coming here. We love having you. We love having you. And of course, I love having you uh, personally because there, the, these questions that I am uh, raising, uh, they, they kind of pertain to me as well, right? Um, I mean, we've had uh, all these diets, these trending diets, and we're, we just really go high in protein. And from what I understand is supposedly when you're high on protein, it, it kind of uh, your fat burns faster, or I, I know that the carbs you need for when you're running, and, and it, it's really confusing. Um, and I also understand that there's blood types that require a certain protein, and protein comes from meat. So if you're a vegetarian, how do you supplement the protein the foot that you get from meat? You, you know, you're so right, and that is usually the first question out of everybody's mind. And you're talking about blood types, and I'm a O blood type, and my daughter's an O blood type, and we're both thriving on a vegetarian diet. And when you ask someone about an O blood type, they would say I should be 100% of a meat eater, really. But it's all about the complex amino acids. And when you eat meat like fish or chicken or beef or, or any of the animal products, your body has to work really hard to change that protein into the complex amino acids for your body to utilize. So your body's working really hard using a lot of its digestive enzymes. Whereas if you're eating a vegetarian diet, you have really bioavailable protein that your body's able to use right away. And for instance, people you know may not know this, but things like leafy greens are a great source of protein. In fact, spinach, for instance, is 45% protein. Really? I didn't yes. know that. And so that's a really great source of protein. And when you're eating a lot of vegetables, one of the magic things about eating a high vegetable and fruit diet is the fiber. And uh, Dr. Anderson, back in the 1990s, did a study on high vegetable fruit diets with a lot of fiber in it. And he found that even diabetics that were type 1 diabetics that they didn't think uh, would be affected by diet, uh, after being on a high vegetarian diet, a healthy one, which is high in fiber, uh, after three weeks, they were able to cut down their insulin injections to 30 to 40%. That, that, that's amazing. That's amazing. And, and you know, I, I have to say, I have myself personally contemplated becoming a vegetarian. And, and I, I have uh, given up red meat. I haven't eaten red meat in, I, I don't even know how long. I, I don't eat it. I mean, I'm not saying anybody else recommend, I, I recommend that no one else eat it, but I don't. Uh, however, I do eat chicken and I do eat fish. And part of it is because in my culture, meat is part of our, our platter. It, it, it's just part of the serving platter. And so because I was raised conditioned to always have meat is the reason why I have to see either chicken or fish on my plate in order to feel that it's a complete meal. You know, I grew up in Texas and it's very similar to your, your background. And you know, there was always the barbecue or the fried chicken on the plate and that wasn't a meal unless you had the meat. And when I transitioned to a vegetarian diet, 27 years ago, uh, it was kind of a learning curve, but you do learn to deal with it in different ways. Like, uh, for instance, I would miss the barbecue. So now I mix a little barbecue sauce into my beans and I get that barbecue flavor. I even taught Larry Hagman uh, the, the, the show Dallas. I don't know if you remember that, but you know, he's a Texan. Uh, he's an O blood type. I taught him that how to be a me. vegetarian. Was that, JR? that was JR. JR. Oh my gosh, I remember that. <laughs> Dating myself. <laughs> I was a kid though. Well, they had they had a second reunion of that show not that long ago, and it was a very big hit. 
But you know, one of the things you can do if you're missing that meaty flavor is to have mushrooms. They're less calories, they have that meaty texture, and they're really packed with all kinds of good nutrients. In fact, the University of Australia did a study on people who had breast cancer, and they found that if you added mushrooms to your diet, in fact, fresh mushrooms were the best, to your diet every day, you could actually cut your uh, chance of getting cancer again by 60 to 70%. Wow, right there in nature. That's yeah. a really good tip. And I gotta tell you, mushrooms is one of my favorite things to eat. Portobello, preferably. <laughs> Portobello, right? Because they actually, I, I, you eat them as a burger and it tastes like yeah. it, it's a burger. Right? Yeah, that's what I have when I when I, I need a burger. I keep referencing <laughs> other meat. I keep referencing meat dishes because mm -hmm. it, the the challenge with transforming your diet into becoming a vegetarian or eating primarily green is missing certain things. And then you know, then there's that act of rebellion, and I'm a rebel at heart. I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna eat every single piece of meat that I find, you know. <laughs> Because I deprived myself for over a week or so. So it's yeah. that's what I guess I'm asking is the balance is how do you recondition yourself to just not missing it? Well, really, um, I'm not saying everyone needs to be 100% vegetarian, but when people add more plant-based foods to their diet, even one or two meals a day, it's amazing how much your body and your health will benefit from that. And I, I work a lot with people who have had heart disease or quadruple bypass heart surgery because the vegetarian diet can reverse that and uh, really prevent heart disease. And I teach these men to do it. And a lot of them will say, but Nancy, you know, I haven't done 100%. You know, I have fish or I have chicken once a week. And I just say, well, have a high quality one. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's no vegetarian police that's going to come and get you. Right. But when you start adding more plant-based foods to your diet, your body acclimates to that and your taste buds acclimate to that. And then you actually do like it better. And your body's getting fed on such a deep cellular level that you aren't as hungry anymore. And your weight starts to adjust. And uh, you start losing a lot of the toxins and acid that is built up in your system. Yeah, no, I, I, the whole process, and, and again, I, I so let's just say, okay, so now we're going to start acclimating. How much time does your body need to adjust where it no longer misses? Right? I'm still stuck on the missing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't believe in deprivation, you know? Right. So, you know, just start doing maybe one meal a day, and then... Uh, adding certain vegetables to your diet that are in season, maybe fresh at the farmer's market, and add that to your diet. And within two weeks, you will start liking that food. It will taste better to you than it did the first time you had it. And so just really quickly, um, name some of uh, the, I guess, plant-based foods that are protein, um, high in protein. Well, like the, the uh, leafy greens are really excellent. And then I don't know if you've ever heard of spirulina, which is a blue-green algae. It's one of the highest protein foods you can eat, and it's actually a great detoxer. And a lot I've of times... i never heard of that. People How are do you being, spell it? S-P-I-R-U-L-I-N-A. Uh, <laughs> spirulina. Spirulina. Yeah, and you can get it from get it places like Hawaii. Uh -huh. And I add it to my morning smoothie, and it gets that you know wonderful green chlorophyll benefit, and it helps detox you. And a lot of times people can't lose their fat because they're toxic, and the fat will protect you from the toxins by putting you know fat around it. And when you detox, your body's able to release the toxins, therefore your body's were able to release the fat as well. Oh my gosh, I could have this conversation with you all day. <laughs> I'm actually really, really uh, happy to have you here and sharing all of your knowledge. You're so knowledgeable. And of course, if anybody's interested, you can actually read her blog and obtain that information on your own. Uh, <laughs> however, we love having Nancy come visit us and give it to us personally. <laughs> Thank you once again, Nancy. And are there any last words you'd like to share with our viewers? You know, just take that first step. And, you know, when you make that choice, that personal choice, and you move in that direction, it gets easier. And you, you get that motivation and inspiration as you start feeling better. I like that. Thank you. Thank you for that. That was a reinforcement. It's about making a choice. And so it's about making that decision. And once again, for more health tips and advice, you can visit Organic Healthy Lifestyle .com And be sure to pick up your copy of Organic Healthy Lifestyle by Nancy today on Amazon.